Sideways. Yeah, sideways. Why? Because the you market's know, sideways? <clears throat> exactly. Or is it because you're trading si- been trading sideways? Because you're sideways. You know, back in the nineties, back in the nineties, it was like a thing to go say head sideways. Like Well, this ain't the nineties. That was like the the, the Will Smith look right here. He was what? just like Say Will Smith? <laughs> too soon, bro. Too soon. <laughs> I come over there and slap your ass. What? You know what? I was just about to do my intro, then I saw Hendy. You know, ever since he got his fifty dollars, he hasn't been in here. <laughs> Hendy, what's going on, bro? Unacceptable. We'll deal with that later. What is going on, crypto fam? Happy Monday. Happy Easters. Or as my mom would say, Eastern, because she has a really thick accent. Uh, welcome back to Sin City Crypto. We are coming at you live from our studio here in Las Vegas, Nevada, with another one of our live shows. I'm your co-host, David. Before we get into the content, quick disclaimer, nothing we say on this channel should be taken as financial advice. Please, D-Y-O-R. If you don't know what that means, Google it. With that being said, I want to introduce you to the man, the two-time champion, back-to-back, baby, Big Rob, what's up? <laughs> Hola, it's your boy, Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. <laughs> welcome. What is that? What is that? It's a welcome, bro. Welcome. You sound like a little mouse. <laughs> so, uh... Question, have you liked the video yet? I'm talking to you, the viewer. If you haven't liked the video yet, what the hell wrong with you? Seven likes, that's unacceptable. And uh, if you ain't subscribed yet, what the hell wrong with you? You, you know that your, your version there, you're not on the, the one that's up to date. How many likes we got on the video, Rocco? Eight. He's got eight. eight. Some BS, bro. You guys, none of y'all have the right application. Up yeah, there. well, you don't have the right anything. Yeah. Uh, anyways, how y'all feeling? It's Monday. You know what? Bitcoin is down. It's up. It's down again. Uh, who knows where it's at? Uh, we we got eight likes. Well, actually, we do know where it's at. It's at forty thousand. I know it's at thirty nine nine right now. So, yeah. you know, that's a good sign, guys. That's a good sign. A I lot think, of longs got liquidated over the weekend. And then we also had a bunch of um, bunch get uh, liquidated just now. So we were sitting at thirty eight. Shorts got liquidated now. Yeah, we got we were sitting at thirty eight. We just shot up to forty thousand. So, uh, anyways, we'll get into that in a moment. So, what is up? Welcome to everybody back to the chat. I, I propose a new idea. You want to hear my new idea, David? Sure. So, when you guys enter into the chat, why don't you drop a, a hola? What do you think? No, no, no hola. I hate it. He hates it. Okay, never mind. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Because you know who was it? I think it was uh, I think it was Broke Yoshi on uh, on. Around the blockchain, he put "Hola, Big Rob." He's like plus one Sin City Crypto, like. But he put "Hola, Big Rob," and then he put. So, anyways, thank you for guys for uh, showing up around the blockchain support. And I saw you guys in the chat. I saw y'all up in there vibing, dropping in plus ones. Did you like? Did you like my argument on video games? Said it when the last question was in regards to a video game. If you didn't watch the Around the Blockchain, it was a competitive thing. Anyways. Uh, I was proposed a question about metaverse and video games. Two very hot top, uh, hot so, uh, <laughs> hot topics in my book, and uh, lots of personal experience in the video games. If you did not know, I am a uh, straight up killer G up in uh, Call of Duty Warzone. How you doing? Um, so yeah. Anyways, I, yeah, they 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 sent me a softball, bro. I was yeah, like, uh... if you if you want to talk about food. Or video games with me, <laughs> or just random things and, that don't and you to happen crypto? to tie food and video games, or you, if you tie food and crypto together, or video games and crypto together, bro, game over, bro. I can see clearly. Game over. You know, speaking now, of food, speaking of food, man, you want you want to know want to know what I have for breakfast? No, not really. So uh, here we go. Oh, 
Okay. Right. So, so then why'd you ask me? <laughs> It's like one of those questions that doesn't actually need an answer. That's called okay. a rhetorical question. So, uh, so my wife, you know, she went shopping. I wasn't really paying attention, right? I didn't know she went shopping. So I go downstairs. I'm looking for something to eat. Oh, God. And uh, I open up the cabinet, and uh, there's there's some Nutella there. You know, big fan of Nutella here. You know, one of the one of the God's best creations is the combination of hazelnut and chocolate all in one package. Uh, I get the nutty aromas, nut, not too, you know, like peanuts and chocolate. It's a little heavy. Hazelnut, it's delicate. It's a good balance. So anyways, I'm sitting there. I ain't got no crackers. And the bread we got, my, you know, my wife's over here doing the keto thing. So we got the keto bread, kind of crumbly. Not really uh, not really Nutella friendly. But I, I got some hot dog buns. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with a hot dog bun and Nutella, right? So what I end up doing is, uh, you know, it's a brioche bun, which is perfect for Nutella because it's got a little bit more fat to it. And so I got my Nutella I'm rubbing it on my hot dog bun, and as I'm spreading it on there, I'm, I look. I, I'm looking directly forward, and I see a thing of bananas. And I'm like looking at the hot dog bun, looking at the banana. I'm thinking of the side. I'm thinking of what a hot dog looks like. I'm looking at the banana. I'm looking at the hot dog bun. I'm like, hmm. Anyways, here, pull up. Uh, <laughs> pull up my. Uh, pull up my laptop. So this is what happened. And this was absolutely delicious, bro. Like, You're you're like, disgusting. You know, I never thought of any and item besides be a, a hot you dog. You used to be a chef for Gordon Ramsay. And like What would he say if he saw this? Dude, right that's now? absolutely genius. I mean, what other item are you going to put in a hot dog bun that besides a hot dog? That looks like bro? he took just, a shit on it. And you know, that was delicious, bro. That's disgusting. A lot of starch there, but it was good. It was good. You know, you know, if I wanted to take it to the next level, you could put some powdered sugar on top of this thing too. But, uh, you know, your boy was just, it was just simple breakfast. But. There you go. All right, that's you're, all I got. You're a sick human being. <laughs> Who does that? Hey, uh, let me put a banana in a hot dog and put Nutella on it. <laughs> so, okay. uh, so, anyways, you know. Put a zero in the chat if you think that's disgusting. <laughs> it's a cross-chain application of a hot dog bun. Got bridged over to banana. Thank you. All right. Uh. Let's say hello to the chat. Who we got in here? My odd first in the chat. Welcome to the fiesta. Uh, big air hug for you, brother. Uh, Stereo 2 on the ones and twos. And in the chat, Chef Murder, Brooke Yoshi, Olga. We got Hadir. Also, we got uh, Nishan, Hindi, and uh, Will up in here. So, welcome to the party, everybody. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, it is Monday, start of the week. I'm a, I'm happy about the show. I'm happy to get back into the grind. You know, we're growing here, and I'm just, I'm, 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 Feeling the vibes, right? Feeling the vibes. Feeling the vibes. Vibe. Feeling the vibes. I'm not really feeling the position of this microphone, though. But anyways. How, uh, what did the Easter Bunny bring you? Uh, you know you know what? I, I, I ordered Pollo Loco, bro, <laughs> yesterday. That was my Easter dinner. My, uh, my kids, we did a little Easter egg hunt for them in the backyard. We're like, oh, we'll wake up at like 6 in the morning. We'll do it. These little things were up at 5 in the morning. Trying to do an egg hunt. I'm like, what? Go, go back to bed. What the hell's wrong with you? And I pulled the rock. What the hell wrong with you? Oh, my boy. Thomas, D-Fib up in here. What the hell wrong with you? D-Fib. What's up, bro? All right. Let's get the show going. Let's go. All right. Uh, pulling up the laptop. Uh, let's take a look. Bitcoin is teetering around, playing around with this $40,000 number. All, we're playing all, with me, Bitcoin. All last night, this morning, uh, we were sitting under $40,000. And as I mentioned, we had this big candle wake up look at this man uh literally you just uh, made a bunch of people poor uh people that were trying to short the market because everyone was in the kind of the same when everybody has the same consensus or vibe that's when the market gets cyclical so uh everybody's like hey forty thousand dollars huge support uh support slash resistance you know what 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 was uh support now resistance anyways everybody's kind of in agreement Hey, we lose this forty thousand. It's uh, it's it's Here, going it's going down. Pull up my laptop real quick. It's going down. Look, so, look at this volume. Look at this volume. Look at that. This is a one hour chart. Look at that yeah, candle. Look at that volume. So you got it. You got to take into account. That a lot of people were shorting the market. They're they're sitting. They're looking at Bitcoin at thirty nine five, and they're like, Hey, this is about to. This is about to. This is on the way down to thirty six thousand. And if you know how. Uh, Leverage trading works basically. Uh, you're just multiplying your gains. So if uh, if you're looking, very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Anyways, people are eyeballing thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollar Bitcoin, maybe even lower, trying to make some big gains. 
Uh, and then uh, you just liquidate them all by getting up to 40000 So that's what that is. Um, so back over here now. Now I we, we went over 40 and then we immediately fell back down. So we'll see. We'll see. Where do, where do you think Bitcoin's going to be at by the end of the day? Under 40. In, in 10 hours from now. Under 40. Under 40? Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. I agree. I think this is. I think we're going to be bouncing around between, um, between like forty-one and thirty-seven for the next ten hours or so. There's going to be a big drop, bro. I yeah, think I you're going to get a couple fake outs in either direction, and then I think we're just going to. I think we're on the way to thirty-six thousand. Um, don't look at that as a negative, people. Look at that as a buying opportunity. Oh. I am actually. Uh, I've mentioned a couple times last week. I am prepared. I got cash on the side. I'm eyeballing thirty six thousand. I don't have any limit orders put in. Bitcoin gets to twenty five k. I will sell a kidney. Yeah. Well, I don't have any limit orders, but I I got cash on the side. I'm waiting for the dip. I I'm telling you this thing is coming. Uh, Lala, hola, welcome back. Um, and then Ethereum has lost the three thousand mark, bro. Kind of scary. You know that three thousand was was. The really NFT good market, support. Man, I'm telling you, it's the NFT market is dying. Really big support at three thousand. So now, I mean, what's the next level? Remember, it was at twenty four thousand for the longest, or twenty four hundred for the longest time. Uh, so, you know, same thing yeah, with see, Ethereum. Here, same, same thing. There's a huge twenty four. See, look at this twenty four hundred. Multiple touches here, man. Um, Your Ethereum volume over the last hours huge. Huge support at twenty four hundred. Oh, this is going back. Robin, you're not the TA guy, remember? Even though you did make a really good TA joke, that shit was hilarious. That was good, right? Was a <laughs> if you missed it, uh, Crypto Stash was on the around the blockchain, and you know he's got this mustache that points up. Robin's like, speaking of TA, uh, yo, uh, your mustache is forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is very bullish. <laughs> I was so proud of Robin. I was so proud. Which is gracias. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, biggest gainers. Decred. What is decred? I remember is looking. It? I remember looking. Not defib. No. Decred. I remember looking into it um, a while ago. We just had so many projects. You look into something. And you're like, oh, that's really cool. And then next thing you know, four months, five months, a year goes by. And you completely forgot what it was about. Um, but... Uh, I can't pull up the website. Oh, there we go. I wonder that is a blockchain-based cryptocurrency <clears throat> launched in 2016. It's a uh, superior store of value. It says here. Yeah. So, so you're taking does nothing. Uh, it's a proof of work slash proof of stake system. You know, uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about this earlier. I was thinking about kind of how proof of work and proof of stake work, and there is the uh, the big hack. Or the big, uh, I don't know if it's called hack, but exploit. Biggest, the big exploit with the stablecoin. Uh, we'll get into this article later. But anyways, uh, stablecoin on Ethereum, over $80 million were stolen due to an exploit. And the exploit came because essentially it was a proof of, it was a governance protocol. So if you have enough tokens, you can essentially, uh, you know, make proposals. And, uh... Yeah, you take out a big ass flash loan, you pick up all the tokens. <laughs> you can make whatever proposals you want and pass them. Anyways, so there's there's definitely negatives to proof of stake. And then there's negatives to proof of work as well. So, but there's no reason you can't blend the two together. You know, if you think about it, you know, if you if you can either, you know, there's been different there's been different proposals by different blockchain makers. And if you think about it, there's no reason you can't randomly pick a proof of work slash proof of stake. And so, you know, everybody's always like, hey, you got to be in this camp or that camp. Uh, there are positives and negatives to both sides. Uh, so, you know, anyways, something to think about. Um, I'm done with this decred thing. All right. Now, pulling up the crypto bubbles, uh, taking a look. A lot of red today. So, this is the... Uh, Crypto bubbles for the daily. Uh, Audius has been on a tear lately. What is going on with Audius? Is there anything new going on? They must have a new partnership because they've been pumping all week. Because like, take a look at the uh, the weekly here, up twenty nine percent. So one of the biggest 
I think yeah, that's the best performing um, project this week. Uh, one of the uh, over seventy percent for the month, bro. Uh, so uh, big moves out of Audius. If you're not familiar with Audius, they are a uh, your Spotify on blockchain, basically. Uh, if you're trying to go with analogies there, uh, so streaming platform for music, but instead of the money going to record labels, the money goes to the artists. So uh, really great concept there. Hopefully they uh, end up taking a lot of the market share from uh, Spotify. Let's get let's get the money back into the people. They you think, deserve. You it. think Spotify and Apple, iTunes or whatever, you think they'll get into the uh, the blockchain space? No, because they have a business model that works. You know, I mean, yeah. honestly, who doesn't use Spotify? I mean, think about it. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, with that said, you know, why why give up that business model? Why give up the revenue? And, you know, if, if they were smart, they would buy up the competition and then run that in parallel. So that way, if somebody does want to go and use a streaming service on blockchain, they can already hedge their bet and be over there. That's how a lot of, uh, a lot of tech companies work. Buy the competition. So that way, uh, if you lose to the competition, you're actually winning. Uh, now, the, uh, the old tried and true. That's right. Uh, Monero's up. Uh, Monero's up. You know, there's been a lot of talk with these uh, privacy coins and things of that nature. So, uh, oh, also, if we get to 30 people in the chat, we are going to open up the club. That's uh, the the limit, in case y'all didn't know already. And crypto fear and greed index 24. I'm a, I'm one, I'm curious to see where this thing's going to go because this 24 was before the dip that we had last night. So in six hours, I'm sure the, uh, we'll be back into the lower part of extreme fear of uh, 20, you know, classically looking back through, through time, look through, look into history when you're under 24, I mean, under 25, always a great time to buy. Uh, and, when you're under 20 has been a phenomenal time to buy. So uh, I have a feeling that uh, we're going to be seeing some uh, very low numbers on the fear and greed index. Uh, the fear and greed index is not, is not, they don't get this number by simple volume. There's tons of different metrics that include like uh, Google search trends, uh, volume and uh, Bitcoin, like on and off exchanges, things of that nature. So uh, taking a look at the traditional markets, uh, the, Everything is pretty much flat here. So 0 0.04 in the NASDAQ, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So, you know, I think there's just a lot of indecision. There's a lot going on. Some of the big banks had their um, their quarterly reports come out. Uh, Bank of America did pretty good. JP Morgan and uh, Chase. Good. They did and, really good. Yeah, yeah. Bank of America did really good. But all the other big banks took some L's. Uh, so uh, with that said, um, and, you know, everyone's kind of trying to see what is going on with Elon Musk and Twitter. You know, Tesla stock's been down a little bit. Uh, Twitter stock's been down as well. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Just a lot of indecision at the moment. Uh, and that's all I got, brother. That's it? That's it. What about what's gold? What's Peter Schiff? I mean, gold looking like. What's gold looking like? All right, let's see. You always got some random ass thing you want me to look at. Oh, yeah, gold. you like, uh... uh What's the uh, what's the trading volume on uh, copper today? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you leave copper alone. Uh, man, you know palladium has been on a straight rip. <laughs> Shit. I'm, I, you, I mean, you want to know? I mean, I can give you. So you know, palladium is actually okay, uh, no, 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 just stop. It's the just key stop. component that's used in Cadillac converters, and it's uh, so palladium Cadillac or catalytic. Cadillac converters. Cadillac. Yeah. For the cars? Yeah. Catalytic converter. Whatever. Catal you say catalytic, I say Cadillac. And Cadillac anyways, converters. so Ukraine and Russia, or actually it's, uh, Russia is the number one producer of uh, palladium. And so it's been doing a huge supply shock. And uh, yeah, so the price of palladium has straight skyrocketed. You guys want to see the price of palladium? No. People are like, what the fuck did I tune into? Uh, yeah, so look, look where palladium is right now, man. Okay. All right, seriously. So, okay. okay, I'm done. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. Let's move on to our uh, next segment that is crypto-related, which is going to be our hot take. Let's go. That's hot. Our hot take today is Bitcoin in the red because of the tax deadline. So the theory behind this 
is tax deadline. People are selling off some assets. They're taking losses to offset some of the taxes they have to pay. So could this be one of the reasons Bitcoin's in the red? Robert, I'll send it to you first. First, I got to propose a question. Have you filed your taxes yet? I did. You did? Yeah. You, you, you passed the deadline? The deadline is today, actually. Yes. So they filed uh, an extension regardless, but I did it like two weeks ago. So. You filed an extension? They filed it for me. So you lied. You haven't filed your taxes. I did file my taxes, but they filed naturally when it's less than a month or when it's less than a month out, they automatically file an extension. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's called covering your back. You do got a big Robin's ass back. You don't use TurboTax, Robin. You got a big back, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you. You know what? Big backs? <laughs> British people. Really big backs. All right, go ahead. Um, you know what? I, I normally would dismiss this as straight FUD, but, you know, there might be something to it. I mean, think about it. You had the big, you had the pullback right before the last day. Uh, and you know what? A lot of people were doing their taxes last minute and they didn't get back the money they wanted or they had to pay something. You know, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I got my taxes done kind of last minute. I got a ton of crap I got to account for. Uh, obviously we have this business here. Uh, we also, I also am a trading genius and because of that, I got lots of trades, so I got to count for all of those. And so, yeah, man, uh, I actually did pretty well on my tax. I got a lot back on my taxes. Uh, but anyways, Terrible. uh, I could see, I could see a lot of people, uh, basically underperforming on their tax returns and, uh, Hey, I need to take some profits because I just wanted to buy this new car I was relying on my tax return to pay for the down payment. That didn't that that wasn't vibing. Hey, Bitcoin's at forty thousand. It's probably going to lose support. Maybe I should take some profits now before it drops to thirty three. I can see that, right? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but normally I would dismiss this, but there might be something to it. Might be something to it. I mean, for me, I pull up my laptop real quick, Rocco. So I'm looking at, okay, so when did this is the Bitcoin chart one day, by the way? So I'm looking like, all right, when did people start getting their taxes, their refunds back? We agree that it was end of February to the middle of March. Yeah, April. yeah. Okay. You so, can say March 1st would probably be, if you had to pick a certain date, I think March 1st would probably be the best March date. 1st. All right, so let's see what happened from March 1st to, let's say, uh, April 5th. Bitcoin went up 35%. So is it correlated? Possibly. And then what happened during the tax deadline, right? So let's say uh, we do from April 5th to now, we are down 16%. Mm, so Dang. See, Sensitive Crypto is sitting here dropping straight facts that you didn't even think about, bro. So, <laughs> you know, Robin will tell you his thoughts. I will tell you my thoughts, but I will back it up in numbers. So I'm the man. Are you in agreement with me? I'm in agreement with you. Wow. I think so, man. I think so because I'm sitting here and, you know, I had so many <laughs> trades last year and I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the hell. And there was a couple of them where I was in a loss and I was like, you know what? It would be worth it for me money-wise on my taxes to just take this L, put it in stable coin and to kind of offset some of the money I've made in crypto on the other trades. <laughs> And so if, if I'm doing that, you can imagine other people, people with a lot more crypto than I do, will do the same. So, and the numbers kind of back it up. You can see it there. So I definitely think it does. Um, so we got somebody new in the chat. Mitch, hola. Welcome. Who's Mitch? Since it occurred to um, <clears throat> Could you be surprised what the price is? Do you know something we don't know? Is that a recrypt? You better not be up in here shilling your coin, bro. Oh, I mean, if you are, I still love you. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Don't uh, don't buy the recrypt coin because uh, we wouldn't recommend it. Anyways, so it happened. Yes, you tax would. deadline. We're both in agreement. You know, I, I, I can see. It, I want to know. I don't think. Chat. I don't think there's a resounding conclusion. You got to remember that. Okay, if you stop thinking about ourselves and being the only country on in the world, uh, you know, Bitcoin is a uh, international network. And so with that said, you know, 
there are other countries outside the U.S. and there's a this is a U.S. tax deadline. So uh, realistically, probably not. But you know, who knows? Maybe maybe there was enough. Maybe there was enough volume from uh, Bitcoin traders uh, that took some L's. Maybe maybe, maybe a push to that direction. So. So DFIP said, uh, people last year that didn't buy in bought in with their tax returns. People who did buy in last year are taking losses with last minute tax returns. Uh, because crypto you, is so okay, here, most it, you know what? I'm not. I'm not a financial advisor or tax advisor. <clears throat> I'll just tell you one thing. If you're looking to not pay a lot of taxes in crypto, just hold it for over one year. There's huge tax differences. If you buy and sell the asset within a 12 month window, you're paying like 24 percent tax right off the rip, or something like that. Uh, way, 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 way less taxes if you buy and sell it in 366 days. I'll just put it that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're you know, huge, huge different. Long, yeah, long you're still gonna pay your thought, You're gonna still pay, you still gotta pay taxes, but you're 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 in a it literally different drops uh, by more than half. Yeah. So there you if go. You hold it. So, um, all right, we're done with the hot take. Let's move on to our very next segment, the talking point. So this article was in our title, so we will cover it first. The SEC risks violating Admin Procedure Act by rejecting spot Bitcoin ETFs, says Grayscale. Grayscale Investment CEO explains that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, a.k.a. the SEC, could potentially violate the Administrative Procedure Act by not approving a spot Bitcoin exchange-traded fund, a.k.a. ETF. Grayscale Investment CEO uh, explained to CNBC last week, quote, from the SEC standpoint, there were several protections that 40 Act products have that 33, which they're referring to the Securities Act of 33 and the Securities Act of 1940, that they don't have. But never ever did those protections address the SEC's concern over the underlying Bitcoin market and the potential of fraud and manipulation. So just to break it down in layman's term, he, the CEO of Grayscale is saying, when they approved the futures ETFs, Using the uh, Securities Act of 1933, the Securities Act of 1940, these were not at the forefront, right? Never ever did those protections address the SEC's concern. Their concern about not passing a spot ETF is it's too volatile and fraud and manipulation. But none of those were addressed with the futures ETF per the Securities Act. So that's what he's saying. And he goes on to say, so the fact that they've now evolved their thinking and approved a 33-act product with uh, Tucurium really invalidates that argument and talks to the linkage between the Bitcoin futures and the underlying Bitcoin spot markets that give the futures contracts their value. The SEC can't look at two like issues, the futures ETF and the spot ETF, through the same lens, and it is, it is in fact potentially grounds for an Administrative Procedure Act violation. CEO has hinted that suing the SEC is a possible option, given the company will take if the agency does not approve their conversion. So I decided to pull up the uh, Administration Procedure Act. Where, uh, the, where did you get this from? This is from, uh, <laughs> I believe, it's from a legit website. It's no, I'm saying it, lo website. it looks like a it looks like a transcript, like a government website. Uh, I was trying to zoom in. Never mind. Uh, the APA serves to police improper agency behavior, protect public safety, and secure proper entitlements. The APA governs all three main category functions, which include rulemaking, adjudications, and licensing. Typically, the agency must give a notice of proposed rulemaking published in the Federal Register. After notice is given, the agency is required to solicit and accept public comments on the rule. So if you're ever wondering, um, oh, they're asking for public comments. Well, it's literally law they have to. The agency must then consider all of the comments that are submitted in passing the final rules. This is law. Now, do you really think they do that? Do you really think that they actually take the comments, listen to them, and then take them into consideration? Robin, do you think they do? I mean, we do here at Sin City Crypto. So make sure you drop uh, your thoughts in the comment section because we here at Sin City Crypto pay attention to what you got to say. With the exception of uh, shilling meme coins. Oh, he wasn't. He said, uh, he said he was he legit wants to know why coin is pumping. We out. will look into it. We will investigate. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know what? Uh, 
Grayscale has been very, very vocal when it comes to the SEC because the vibe for, okay, so with Grayscale, they, they obviously have their application in. Uh, it's supposed to go up for, their deadline is, was it like September, October, something like that? For the uh, spot? Yeah, the July. spot. For, for uh, Grayscale, it's yeah. July. It's July? Yes. Okay, well, sooner than I thought. So anyways, they have to make a dis- determination by July, or they can just delay it like they have twice before. Chances are they will. Yeah. And what do you think What do you think will get a... Uh, which one do you think will come first? The ETH 2.0 or ETH 2.0. a decision on Grayscale? ETH, oh, well, decision on Grayscale. I yeah. thought you were going to ask ETH 2.0 Cause they could spot being being uh, approved. No, But as far as the, just a decision, I think it'll be the decision. Because ETH 2.0, they're saying fall. It'll go into like November, December. Mark mm. my words. Well, so... They, they've, they've, they've come out and they said, hey, you deny this thing, we're going to sue you. Uh, you should... Uh, They're essentially saying, like, you use these rules here, but you refuse to use the same rules here. That, like, why? Right? Yeah. You can't pick and choose the rules you want to apply to certain things if they all fit into the same thing. So... I don't like I said. I don't know if Gary Gensler is on some kind of. I'm telling you, I'm in. I'm in the camp. I know I you. you, I've said it several times before, but I'm in the camp here that the grayscale spot Bitcoin ETF is going to pass. In my opinion, I think it's going to be the first one because grayscale is the holder of the most Bitcoin. Nobody has more Bitcoin, like six hundred fifty thousand Bitcoin, and they're already custodying it. And they're already trading their their uh, basically their uh, their stocks or whatever. Their ticker. And, yeah, they're they're trading the on, on Wall Street. So it's already there. <clears throat> it's already set up. They're already proven to be capable of custodying and uh, trading, buying, selling, all that. They're they're already they're already got a proven track record, and they're the leading candidate to do it. And they could have denied them in the last. When they, when they came up for approval or denial. They could have denied them right then and there. They didn't. Why? Do you think they really want to pass one? But here's the or thing. Do you think they're just stringing them no, along? No, no. You know, it's not about if they want to or not. It's uh, they, have, it, they had influence from the banks, and there was a lack of regulation coming from the government. And so now what has happened since they delayed it? Uh, the government, particularly Joe Biden, has... Uh, came out with his executive order, and he has basically told all of the branches, all 18 financial branches of the government, to embrace crypto or at least regulate it and put some, put some guidelines to it. And the Treasury Department, Janet Yellen, has came out and, for the most part, seems to be a supporter of, of uh I feel of like, she, like she's not sure. Right, she starts she, talking. She she recognizes, she the other way. but here's the thing: she talks about it in 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 a subjective way, where it's not dismissing it or promoting it. She's like, "This is blockchain. It has a lot of value. There's a lot of people trading with it. There are some positives. There's also some negatives. So the 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 stance that she has now." Vastly different than the stance that, w- that she had before. Yeah. And so oh, it's yeah, a different works. ideology. You know, she's more open to the concept. And I think <clears throat> that this is the ideology that is moving across all of the different departments. It's not just the Treasury Department. So I think with the SEC, with other, you know, when, when the Treasury Department is more or less endorsing blockchain technology... When you're like sitting here, you're looking at your neighbor, you know, the, you, you, you're paying attention. You're like, okay, well, they're cool with it. So, you know what I mean? You don't yeah. want to, you don't want to be the first mover, basically. You know, like if you're, if you see your coworker doing you something. You don't want to be the first mover, but do you want to be the last mover? Well, here, yeah, that's the thing. You want to play it safe, especially when you're the, uh, the SEC, you know, yeah, you're, you're in charge of Wall Street, essentially. You're in charge of 
the of the heartbeat and the nervous system for the financial center for the largest economy and the wealthiest economy in the world. You can debate China. They've been making some moves, but you know a lot of their numbers are fudged. But anyways, if they're not first, they're second. And if they are second, they're close first. Anyways. <laughs> so 15 disclaimers. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this question, Robin. What's up? We talk about all the time that when a spot ETF gets approved, there will be a massive supply shock because... Whoever gets approved is going to have to go out and buy that amount of Bitcoin that they offer on their ETF. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, so but, but there's, there's more to it. You know where it. I'm going with this? No. So if that's true, we talk about that all the time. And Grayscale is the first one to get approved, and they already have 650,000 Bitcoin. Does that mean if they get approved, then we're not going to see a big price shot or a big price jump in, uh, in, in Bitcoin? It does. Uh, Here's here's the thing. They're already holding the Bitcoin. They okay, don't have to, it, it's not it's not okay. When when Grayscale buys Bitcoin, they're not buying it from the order books. Okay, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So 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 if they buy another two hundred thousand Bitcoin, it makes no difference. It doesn't change the price because they're going to be buying it not you know behind the counter from Coinbase or Binance or where, where, whatever custody. Now because it is going to be publicly traded and because it's just like a commodity what happens when everybody goes to buy oil all at once and i'm not talking about a barrel of oil i'm talking about the commodity that tracks the price of oil it goes up yeah the same thing will happen on wall street and just in the same way that we get the price of bitcoin because it's the average of all the exchanges now you average in the price of the exchange on wall street so if you list if you list Bitcoin on Wall Street and the Wall Street is 20% of the, all of the transactions for the entire ecosystem, 20% of the Wall Street's transactions go to the average price. So when you say like, hey, if they're holding all the Bitcoin, it doesn't matter. If people are buying and trading Bitcoin through an ETF that's pr provided by Grayscale, the price that you buy and sell, that's the order books. That's the factor in the price for the Bitcoin. So if anything, it makes it even more, more relevant. Okay. Now, what do you think is more important? Do you think for the price of Bitcoin to reach new all-time highs, do you think it's more a spot ETF or retail FOMO? I don't know. I say you're forming a question of what's more important. I, I don't really care. Honestly, for me, I don't okay, care. What is a better chance of, of pushing Bitcoin to that new all-time high? Is it retail FOMO like we saw in No, uh, the retail investors don't even care about Bitcoin. Uh, when somebody comes up to retail you. Retail investors? What the hell wrong with you? No, what I'm saying is the retail FOMO is not. People aren't coming up to you and be like, hey, man, you think I should buy some Bitcoin? No, they were like, hey, should I buy some uh, some SHIB? Should I buy some other meme coin? Should I buy this? Should I buy some NFTs, uh, Ethereum? Like people that buy Bitcoin are savvy investors and traders and long-term hodlers and people that have been in crypto space for a while. Uh, and so this retail FOMO, there's not enough people that are, don't have exposure to Bitcoin that are all of a sudden going to just dump a bunch of money into Bitcoin and double the price. But we'll, I mean, we'll they literally did that in 2020. No, they didn't. Uh, institutions well, did. Uh, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk uh, Elon Musk, million. Square, and then uh, MicroStrategy, uh, Grayscale, yeah, accumulating. But they weren't the ones that that pushed it to new all time highs, right? Why not? MicroStrategy continues to buy it. Doak, uh, Terra Luna is buying a hundred million of Bitcoin a day, and we're not seeing all time highs. That's because they're buying it all, uh, all on the back end. So okay, okay, exactly. So, so, so going in, going in, buying off going in. Books, a, okay, a couple months, investment. a couple months into 2020, a couple months into 2020, we were sitting at thirty thousand dollar Bitcoin. Yes, and we're still yeah, sitting at thirty thousand dollar Bitcoin two yeah. years later. So yeah, there's all, no, there's an all time so. The the, but but here's the thing: like you can't you, dismiss that. You but, can't just say, okay. You're uh, two years ago. We're here. Now we're here. But, what about everything in between? Right. Look. I mean, it's important. You can't just go from A to... You can't drive from Vegas to Florida and then not talk about what happened on the drive there. No, but if you go to drive from Vegas to Florida and you turn around and end up back in Vegas and not in Florida, then you know what? You're in the same spot you were when you started. Yeah, but yeah, but 
You right? learned on the way there. <laughs> what, what, yeah. <laughs> you, okay. I'm just saying, man, like, you, you, you know, you made a point about institutions, people that buy large amounts of Bitcoin. They're not going to Coinbase, right? Yeah. They would wipe out the liquidity. So why isn't the price of Bitcoin moving then? So it was because the retail, the retail because the retail investors not here. They don't care about Bitcoin. Only the hodlers do. And the people that hodl, they buy it and they remove it, and then that's it. They're not they're not playing with the price. The only reason the price is moving up and down in big swings is because of the traders. Yeah. And you know what? Slowly the price does go up. Uh, because in the beginning, you know, towards the beginning of uh, 2020, we, we, we are sitting over 20% higher. You know, we were sitting at 30,000 or 29,000 and it was like uh, March of 2020. Yeah. And now, I definitely, I definitely think, though, that the institutional investors are the reason we are not seeing a $20,000 Bitcoin right now. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. And Speaking here's of the thing. So when they do pass the spot, Bitcoin ETF. There's going to be a ton of institutional players. Yes. That now they are comfortable buying. That's it. like their green light, right? Yeah. Because now you know the SEC is behind it. And even though there's no set regulation, this is supposed to be done this way, at least you know that the SEC is behind it because they approved the spot ETF. And so I agree with Robin. Speaking of Bitcoin. We have a very special guest that is going to be joining our show on Thursday. She was one of the main hosts at Bitcoin Miami 2022. Natalie Brunel will be joining us Thursday at 10.45 a.m. Vegas time. We are super excited to have her. It is confirmed. We're good to go. It's going to be a badass interview. You guys, make sure you stay tuned. Come check out that show, obviously, and uh, bring friends and family. We're super excited for that. So. I figure we're talking about Bitcoin. We're talking about Natalie. She's a huge Bitcoin proponent. Bitcoin, I'm going to ask her. I'm going to be like, you're a Bitcoin maxi, right? All you do is talk about Bitcoin. Nobody likes to be called a maxi. That's why I'm going to say that. Yeah, that's so you're going to just be like. <laughs> Very first question. Okay, I'm done. Uh, I, don't, I don't like this channel. Like you're, a, you're a Vegas party <laughs> douche, right? I mean, you, you got Sin City Crypto back here. You just hang out at the club all day, right? And gamble. You're degenerate, right? Like. <laughs> Hey, bro, got to keep it fresh. All right, let's move on. Yeah. We're going to Russia. Russian bankers reportedly want to outlaw non-custodial crypto wallets. A major Russian banking association wants to criminalize keeping your own crypto keys, a.k.a. decentralized wallet, a.k.a. hardware wallet, a.k.a. offline. The Association of Banks of Russia, an organization that includes more than 300 Russian banks and financial institutions, has called on lawmakers to criminalize, criminalize, Storing crypto outside of sin. <laughs> Anytime I see words like this, criminal laughs. I think of George Bush. I think of George Bush. That man was one of the worst spoken presidents ever. You fooled me once. Uh, shame on, uh, on, on me. Uh, fool me twice. Shame. You ain't gonna fool me twice. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, if you're not keeping your crypto on a centralized exchange and no one is custodying it. Yeah, did you see the video when... Uh, was somebody threw a shoe at George? <laughs> Someone threw a what? Just keep talking, bro. I'm going to pull it up. Just keep talking. Okay. It's, it's the funniest shit I've ever seen, bro. So if you're not familiar with a non-custodial or a self-custodial wallet, it allows users to store crypto without relying on a third party like Coinbase, like Kraken, like Binance, that is able to freeze, block, or seize the crypto assets. This essentially enables investors to, quote, be their own bank by getting full control over their crypto and the associated <clears throat> private key. And the bank ain't happy with this, so they are trying to outlaw it. The uh, association also proposed to introduce criminal liability for refusing to provide keys to authorized agencies. So essentially, if you're in Russia and the government police, whoever, comes to you and says, we want your key, and you say no, you can go to jail. All right, all right. I got, I got this shoe video. You ready? Oh my God. Pull up the laptop. All right, it's a look. Yeah, the best part. The best part is that dude got two shoes off, bro. He fired two shoes, bro. Where is the Secret Service? I was expecting the Secret Service like tackle the dude. Yeah, you know, Bush got some moves. Though. I thought you said the ship video. I was like, what shit? The shoe. I've seen that shoe video. That shit was funny. You know what was really funny though? Dodge both shoes. The baby burper. We're going to have to show burger. that again. We might have to show that to Natalie when she's off. 
Hey, Natalie, have you seen this? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Robin, what are your thoughts on this uh, Russia article? Um, Sending people to jail for not giving up their crypto keys, outlawing non-custodial wallets. They're trying to take control over crypto. I mean, it's no surprise. And, you know, Russia's been leaning more, you, you know, so with the fall of the Berlin Wall, the fall of the USSR, and, you know, they, they started going the direction of a real democracy and, you know, giving people freedoms. And, you know, essentially they, they did move away from communism. Uh, but... The authoritarianism is is growing, and the power that Vladimir Putin has is growing, and his reach is getting worse and worse, and so I feel like they're going backwards, man, and this is just another example. It's just like, hey, man, you know, we don't want you to be in control of anything. We want to control yeah. everything, uh, and it's sad because, um, you know, the people that are paying the price for this are the citizens, and so, yeah, it just sucks, man. I agree. I mean, I, I don't really have much else to say besides uh, Russia. What the hell are you doing? Russia? What the hell is wrong with you? All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, is, am I surprised? No. But good luck, dude. Good luck. The only thing that worries me is if they know you have a wallet, the hardware wallet, and they come up to you and they ask you for your keys and you say no and they try to put you in jail, that's fucked up, man. That's fucked up shit. So that's talk about government overreach. There it is. All right, we're moving on to some more Bitcoin news. The Bitcoin access to the Bitcoin Lightning payments has grown by a whopping almost 80,000% in one year. According to a report by the team at Arcane Research, a record 80 million crypto users now have access to the Bitcoin Lightning Network. One year ago, that number stood at 100,000, and now it is at 80 million, which signifies a 79,900% increase. Uh, Arcane Research explains the increased access to the Bitcoin Lightning Network is due to an increased number of payment applications integrating the payment service. And you can see here, Cash App is the majority. Cash App, for sure, bro. Uh, and then you have Chivo, which is the uh, wallet in El Salvador. Bro, 80 million people are using Cash App, bro. Think, of, think about how, how significant that is. Huge. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, um, Robin, are we getting ready to see Bitcoin not just be a store of value? Are we going to be able to see, are we going to be Jack Mahler's where we go into a store and just use a lightning network to buy a soda? I mean, here's the thing. If you want to, yes. But for one, one thing that I'm looking at, so the lightning network is still pretty new and uh, it's still pretty centralized. Now, the lightning network itself uh, it is uh, it, it is it lives on top of the Bitcoin network, so it lives on top of the layer one of Bitcoin, uh, and then the Lightning Network basically it just does a crap ton of transactions, like twenty thousand transactions, and it just checks in with the uh, with the main network every uh, I think like every block or every couple of blocks or something like that. Anyways, it's just you're getting a lot of centralization. So you're kind of getting away from what Bitcoin is. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I don't think you can have, I don't even, it's not even, I think, you physically can't have cheap transactions that are processing super fast without centralization on the Bitcoin network. Just not really possible. Yeah. Uh, and so if that's what you're looking for, you're giving up, uh, you're giving up your decentralization. So, I just want I just want to clarify that because essentially Cash App is controlling Bitcoin at this moment, at this for for the, the that network. sector. Yeah. That sector Cash App is in control of it. And you know, it's only so much transparency you can have with that, you know, because you know, I trust Cash App. It's run by uh Jack Dorsey. And so you know, good company. I'm just saying, it's like, be beware, because I think in the same way that you see new stable coins pop up and you see them getting exploited, there's going to be other market players that come into the space that start using the Lightning Network that are going to end up either frauding people or coming out with 
different applications that get exploited. And so with that, I'm just saying it's it's a fast moving space. The Lightning Network pretty much non existent two years ago. And, and now it's and you huge. A, and you got a twenty six year old I would uh, starts a my, company. My advice my advice would be don't move large sums of money on, on, on the Lightning, Lightning Network. Yes. I agree. Uh, and you can just use the, the regular block, you know, use the layer one. That, that would be my recommendation. Now, you want to go mess around go buy some movie tickets, 20 bucks, 40 bucks, you know, here or there. You know, you want to test it out. You want to, you know, it's kind of like a novelty now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I can, I can pay for stuff in Bitcoin. You know what I mean? I can, I can go put a, buy a tank of gas in Bitcoin or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I would that, have a hard time doing that. But th- that's... But Would you ever like just daily stuff use your Bitcoin? I just But here's the I thing, instead of keeping your money in a checking account, you just keep it in a, in a Bitcoin account. You know, it, it, yeah. it doesn't have to it's like it's like saying like it's like having a savings account in dollars before before crypto even existed. And be like, I'm not spending my dollars, I'm saving it. Like, well, you keep some, keep your spending cash and then keep your saving cash. Yeah. And and this ideology that people have that like well you can't spend your Bitcoin but like bro you wanna you wanna treat Bitcoin like it's cash and create the Lightning Network and be like hey you can use it as payment but then be like don't well don't spend it like what, what kind of sense does that make? I mean honestly what I kind of sense does that make? Bitcoin. Just like just think of it as like hey I made a thousand dollars this this I made a thousand dollars this month okay I'm saving eight hundred of it I got two hundred to spend boom that's all you got to do. And then put your savings into a freaking cold storage wallet and then use the rest. I don't understand why there's this big freaking notion. But like, well, uh, if you look at the, the, the pizza that you bought in 2008 and then like, yeah, well, you could have also taken the, the same money that you bought on that pizza. You could have invested in Apple stock. There's no difference. You know what I mean? You could have, you could have looked at any purchase you did back in 2012, at any purchase, and you could have invested in Apple. Tesla. Tesla. With that same cash, you could have literally been like, you know what, I'm not buying this pizza. I'm gonna go buy some Tesla stock. And then you can and then and then people are like, Well, if you would have just not spent your Bitcoin back in 2012, it'd be worth all like you, you could say that about anything. Yeah, if you also uh ran uh, the, the the Hail Mary pass on the last play of high school, maybe you'd come off as a king or whatever. Like, stop living in the past. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a high school, you know your boy was a homecoming yeah, king. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. We homecoming know. king. Homecoming king. Okay. Uh, class of 2002, Grammy yeah. High School. How you doing? Okay. All right. <laughs> One we'll of move. my greatest achievements outside of being an absolute genius in that's trading. Sad. So. How sad is that? When a grown man says, "One of my greatest <laughs> achievements was when I was homecoming king." Wow. All right. Let's move on. We're going to DeFi. We're going to Beanstalk. Not Jack and the Beanstalk, but Beanstalk DeFi Farm. Suffers $180 million flash loan exploit. Beanstalk Farms is the latest DeFi project to suffer from such an incident, resulting in a nearly $75 million theft. Project, uh, if you're not familiar, the project provides a decentralized credits-based stablecoin, dubbed Bean. Someone uh, stole close to $75 million in ETH from the protocol through a flash loan attack. Uh, users can take out a loan and repay it in one transaction through a flash loan. It is a convenient approach to addressing the risk of borrowers not repaying their loans, although it has proven to be a weapon in the wrong hands. Attackers can leverage the flash loan method to borrow tremendous money in one go, although such attacks require a fair bit of knowledge. In this case, the attacker borrowed $1 billion in DAI, USDC, and, and uh, Tether from the Aave Protocol, the liquidity was then used to buy a steep amount of the bean tokens. They also acquired some Curve and LUSD. So hold on a second. You could borrow a billion dollars without any collateral? Uh, what? what? You don't need to repay it. It's fucking crazy, man. Addressing the risk of borrowers not repaying their loans. Yeah. Now... The bean token grants access to seeds, which represents the voting power per user. However, the derivative tokens can be converted directly into seeds, enabling malicious actors to dominate the voting power and execute an emergency governance action. So what this guy did. This is some deep shit, bro. There's some, like, uh, a lot of research goes into being able to manipulate contracts like this. With the proceeds from the bean contract in hand, 
The culprit seemingly repaid the initial flash loan and pocketed roughly $75 million in profit. So, uh, took out a billion stable coins. Then he went and he essentially took over the governance and launched I'm an still, emergency I'm governance. I'm like action. beside myself that you can just borrow a billion dollars without collateral. I mean, no, that's not. No, that's how flash loans work. You don't, you don't, you don't put up collateral for flash loans. Flash loans, you just got to pay it back within a one block settlement. That's that's insane. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Robin? Is DeFi broken? <clears throat> it's not broken. It's just not tested. That's the problem. You know, it's like uh, you know, being you know, remember when uh, they were launching rockets back in the '60s? They just kept blowing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was alive. I remember that. Well, that was a joke. I know. Oh, you, it was a joke? I thought you were actually alive in the 60s. But wow. uh, no, so, you know, with any emerging technology, there has been nothing but setback and setback through the history of, of all of these implementations. Uh, you can look at the creation of the automobile from the, uh, remember when they were like launching, they're like, hey, we're going to start, you know, we learn how to fly. But instead of uh, building planes, they built those big ass blimps that filled with uh, filled yeah. with an explosive hydrogen. And uh, isn't that what your uh, head is filled with? Just hydrogen. It's filled with and uh, air. It's filled with Bitcoin. How you doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, anyways, y- you end up like trying different things out, and certain things work, certain things don't. Certain things break, certain things don't, and. Here's just another example. It's just this industry is not tried and tested. Yeah, that's and, the problem, guys. You know, We're if so you're early. gonna if you're gonna put in any substantial amount of, of capital into something, uh, at least let it be something that's established. Yeah. Uh, but even then, it's still pretty risky. I mean, you see Axie Infinity with the Ronin chain, six hundred million dollars. I mean, that's you yeah, know that's these these bridges are pretty risky, man. You know, it doesn't matter how secure the base layer is. You know, when you bridge yep. something else, you know, all that somebody has to do is confiscate. Find the back door. Yeah, find it, some, yeah, just think of it. If you have a bridge, <clears throat> if you have a bridge from one, uh, one country to another, you know, let's say, uh, let's say uh, you know, Portugal to Morocco. If you're not familiar with this, uh, this geography here. Portugal, Morocco, 30 miles away. Uh, it's just uh, the water between uh, Africa and Europe that separates it, 30 miles. And so if you're, cro- you know, you could have a very stable government on one side in Portugal. You could have a very stable government on the other side in Morocco. And then you could be traveling your boat across and get abducted by pirates. And it's nothing to say negatively about Morocco or Portugal, you just happen to be going across a bridge or a path in between the two and got taken advantage of. And it's the yeah. same. You could be tra- tra- transferring from Ethereum to Binance. But if the bridge that connects the two has vulnerabilities, then it doesn't matter what the hell is going on in Ethereum or Binance. Just an example. So yeah. just be careful when it comes to bridges. That's all I'm saying. And like, like, you know, like I said, this is how you know we're early in the space. There's literally... Like, 10 years from now, this stuff's not going to happen, right? There just needs to, like, the most important facet of blockchain is the developers, right? There's just not enough good developers out there. The best ones are working for Ethereum. They're working for Cardano. They're working for Polkadot. So when you have these other projects, layer twos, layer threes, even some layer ones, I mean, think about it. There's, There's only 15 NBA superstars per team. There's only so much to go around. So as the space matures, as more people get into blockchain, you, we see it happening. You see big names from big traditional companies from the traditional finance world jumping ship into cryptocurrency. It just doesn't happen overnight. It'll take some time. That's why be careful. If you're going to run on uh, like a DeFi or a bridge, like Robin said, just be careful. Uh, know what you're doing. And if you're unsure, just don't do it. It's also Beanstalk Stablecoin. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you do understand when you invest in Beanstalk Stablecoin, you're taking a risk, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying that I know nothing about the project. 
outside of what I read today. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't aware of Beanstalk token. I didn't know anything about it, and I read about it today. So just from a non-research, subjective viewpoint, I'm not going to be putting a ton of money into Beanstalk coin. I'm just, I just, just this my my ideology. Same reason I'm not going to put any any money into a Pitbull token. I'm not going to put any money into a Shiba Inu token. I'm not going to put any money into a Doge token. This is where I'm getting at. So yeah, there you go. Rob, we got a new uh, crypto fan member. You want to? Yeah, KDK. Crypto don't cry. KDK. Hola, welcome. Sin City Crypto. You know, apparently, our friend George has a lot of brothers. <clears throat> This is a second brother, right? AZ Chris, brother. KDK, brother. How many more you got, George? How big's your family? Just curious. Not that it matters to the show, but I want to know. All right, we're moving on. Air Europa releases the first NFT flight ticket series on Algorand. Speaking of Algorand, great time to buy. Not financial <laughs> advice. One of the leading Spanish airline companies, Air Europa, partnered with the blockchain entity... Travel X to introduce the world's first series of NFT airline tickets. Users who buy such collectibles will board a special flight between Madrid and Miami on November 29, 2022. Uh, the non-NFTs are minted on Algorand's blockchain, and that's all I have highlighted. Now, Robin. Hey, Basil. What are your thoughts? What are some benefits and drawbacks to doing this? Well, I like the idea of... Of making tickets NFTs, <clears throat> not 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 the collectibles. I'm just saying that instead of using the paper thing and QR code, and yeah, just QR code. Why not just have this live on the blockchain instead of having uh, a third party, you know, buy and sell and take all these extra fees? Like, <clears throat> let me buy my ticket, and in the same way that I send an NFT to somebody else to their to their Ethereum wallet address as an example, let me send my ticket that way. And instead of paying, uh, what is it, StubHub? You ever bought something off of StubHub? It's like, it's like you buy a ticket, it costs 500 bucks, right? For a sporting pay, uh, event, you pay like $120. Yes. And then I'm just like, where? It's listed as 500. Where the hell? Why, why do I go to checkout? It's $620. Like, that is absolute robbery. And so why can't I just send somebody a ticket? Or why can I not just... Because then they can't charge you change Exactly. Fees. So this is why I am like... That's why I'm a big fan of turning all tickets into NFTs, circumvent the institution, stop making money on all these transactions. And what, what are you doing? I'm vibing with you. Okay. I feel the energy from you. So I'm like... I, I thought, Speaking of I that, thought you were going to like throw a fireball here or something. Like, <laughs> what are you can... <laughs> By the way, did you ever play uh, Street Fighter? I did, man. Who was your favorite character? Um, I uh, definitely Ken, bro. Ken, Ken, Ken's my Ken's my jam, bro. And you know what? Your boy's a straight uh, Street Fighter genius, bro. You know, I, I'm telling you, I throw down, I throw down. Just say, know, uh, watch out. Sagat was my guy. You know what else I used to play? I used to, I used to play. Yeah, Sagat's kind of cheesy, bro. You're cheesy. He's kind of cheesy. And I like the uh, I like the dude with the long arms. Dalsim? Dalsim. Uh, I used to play uh, Tekken a lot, too. That was my jam. Tekken was cool. Tekken. Anyways. The girl um, with a big bow on her back. I don't know how to pronounce her. You know, what, you know what project is, is working on doing this? is Theta. Such a cool... Uh, that Theta deep dive will be coming next week. Next week or the following week, depending on if we're going to do Bat first or Theta. But Theta is such an amazing project. Mm -hmm. That deep dive was so much fun for me to do. Uh it's going to be a really good one, and they got, they're going to disrupt a lot of companies, man. And this just kind of brought me to it, the whole NFT ticket thing. Uh, it's going to be amazing, so stay tuned for that. All right, we're moving on. Let's move on to this one first, NVIDIA. An NVIDIA RTX 3090 mod modification could reportedly make GPU, <clears throat> graphics processing unit, crypto mining more efficient. A PC gaming electronics researcher made headlines in the PC world this week after finding a way to boost the computational efficiency of the NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics card per kilowatt per hour. That could save the GPU crypto mining community some coin on their electric bill. 
Uh, out of the box, the RTX 3090 has a manufacturer reference TGP, which is total graphics power, of 450 watts. That's how much power the graphics subsystem requires to run the chip and keep it from overheating. WCCF Tech says that uh, most custom models run closer to 500 watts. But Igor Labs found the way to limit power consumption at 300 watts, which is a 37% decrease, without losing nearly as much gaming performance. This was tested using 10 games at 4K resolution. So, Big Rob, you're a big GPU. You're a big computer nerd. <clears throat> What's that? Why not? You weren't paying attention to the article, were you? No, no, I am. Okay. And so, why, why not save some energy, man? I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it, your, yeah. your business model literally is to generate as much revenue as you can from mining and at the same time keep the lowest energy cost and you have the most power hungry graphics card the 3090 in the history of all graphics cards that are out for retail 3090 is a straight beast uh, i don't think i think you need at least like a you know, if you're going to put in a pc at least like a 800 watt power supply minimum uh just to what does ours have we have a 3080 well what, what's our power supply 600 uh, no we have 1200 1200 well we got a lot of things plugged in that thing yeah um anyways um yeah so i mean it makes sense there's really no there's no uh there's no nothing i can really harp on here i mean uh the price of the 3090s have went down though and you can pick them up retail finally uh so let's see here yeah let's see 3090 yeah here here they have them for uh, 1900 dollars. look at this 1900 for 3090 <clears throat> yeah what I paid for the 3080. So, with the um, so, do you think, like, okay, so in res in regards to this, do you think more people now are going to try to mine because their electric bill is going to be cheaper, or do you think it's insignificant? I mean, it's only 37 percent decrease, right? What's no. Like, what are your here's thoughts? the thing: nobody's buying graphics cards right now because everyone's in anticipation for Ethereum to go to proof of stake. There's some and, other coins you can mine. Yeah, Ethereum Classic. No, well, you can uh, mine Raven coin. anything and then get paid <clears throat> mining rewards in a token that can't be mined. No, no. So you can mine. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. Let me, let me. So what you're referencing is you mine Ethereum and get paid in whatever you want because people will take Ethereum. So you can you can mine Ethereum. Now you can go to a website and you can. You can hook your graphics card up to the website, and you could be mining for them, but what they're doing is they're mining Ethereum, and then instead of paying you an Ethereum, they just paying another token. So you're not, you, you can only mine, truly mine, a cryptocurrency that's proof of work. So if you're mining something, you're getting paid in Cardano, you're not really mining Cardano. Don't 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 think all of a sudden you broke the Cardano system and you're you're backdoor freaking mining. No, you're just mining Ethereum and they're taking the Ethereum and they're like, we got a thousand dollars worth of Ethereum here in the last week, so we're gonna give you a thousand dollars worth of Cardano. That's that's literally how it works. So, uh, <clears throat> you're gonna unplug the Ethereum network from mining. So now you're left with ETH Classic, Ravencoin, uh, Kadena. Kadena and Zillica, anyways, like, there's a lot of projects that are not that sexy. I'll just say that. Kadena's pretty, pretty, um, sexy. pretty sexy. However, they're not, they're not mining card, they're not graphic card heavy. So, you can mine Kadena with, with, like, laptops and shit. So, yeah. uh, it's not really, so anyways, what I'm saying is, like, what the, what the hell are you going to do with a, with a $2,000 investment what are you going to, you're going to get a $2,000 investment plus the big mining motherboard, plus the fans, all this stuff. You're drawing energy to mine ETH Classic. Yeah. Not a good look, bro. That's all I'm saying. I mean, what's wrong with ETH Classic? A uh, lot. <laughs> yeah. What isn't wrong with ETH Classic? All right. Uh, one more article I want to talk about. And then we're moving on. AMC Theaters mobile app now accepts Doge, Shib, and more. AMC Theaters, which is an American pro-crypto movie theater chain, updated its mobile application services to, services to accept Doge, SHIB, and other cryptocurrencies as payments across the United States. This is a tweet from them. Uh, 
Adam Aaron, who is the CEO, exactly as promised, the AMC mobile app for AMC's U.S. theaters now accepts online payments using Doge, Shib, and others, thanks to BitPay, also Apple Pay, Google Pay, and PayPal. To do so, you first need to get the latest version of their app. Again, they are integrating with BitPay. Speaking of BitPay, super cool project. We did an interview with them down in Miami. Was that part? That wasn't part of our Fave Projects video, huh? No, it was not. I can pull it up if you want to watch it. Um, no, it's too long. It's five minutes. Yeah, it's too long. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Um, so, Rob, will you be going to the movies and will you be buying ship to pay for your movie tickets? <laughs> you said is that ship a real, is that a real question? Is that a real you question? You said ship has no utility. Well, here you go. Watch a movie, pay with ship. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me get two tickets. That'll be <laughs> 70 million Shiba tokens. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Because nobody stops you from bringing your service dog in with you. I'm just going to literally bring a Shiba in you into Hell the movie yeah. theater with and me. And pay with you. I'm going to bring it in there. I'm going to have a Shiba in you on my shoulder like this. And I'm going to be like, uh, take it for one. And they were like, is that a Shiba in you? But like, you take Shiba in you now, right? <laughs> so <laughs> here's my dog. You know, the when, when Shib started exploding last October in 2021, those dogs, bro, you want to talk about price increase? Those dogs went from like 1500 2 k to $7,000, $8,000 for a Shiba Inu They've dog. always been $7,000, what are you talking about? No, they haven't. Yes, they're like the most sought-after breed uh, in all of Japan. All right, so they went and, from seven, eight thousand to fifteen. 000. Yeah, you, you you just became more aware of the price. It's like the, the the graphics card thing. Like all of a sudden, everybody wanted a graphics card, and they're like, "Whoa, they're three thousand dollars." Well, normally they're two thousand. They're marked up a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's a big market. You know, that's fifty percent. You ever seen that? Uh, what's that? What's that movie that had the Shiba Inu dog that waited outside the train station? You know what I'm talking no about, idea. Rock? You know what I'm talking about? Really no one sad. has any really idea sad. what the hell really sad movie, about. man. Uh, what the hell, bro? And so there's there's a statue in um, there's a statue in Japan, and it's a dog. And so what happened? This guy he would get on the train every morning to go to work, and his do- and his Shiba Inu dog would follow him, and the dog would sit at the train station all day long until he got back from work. So when he got back from work. He'd get off the train, and there's a ship any dog waiting for him at the, at the train station, and then he would walk back home with him. Yep. And then what ended up happening was he died. The guy died. Yeah, oh, the guy, not the dog. The guy died. <sighs> Good. Thank God. But the thing was, the guy died after he got on the train. So uh, the dog sat there for like 10 years every single day. Seriously? Yeah, it's really sad, man. That's it. That's messed up. Uh, so, yeah, he, he it, it has like a... Yeah, yeah, dog's tail, bro. That was such a good movie, man. Really sad. Hey, Rob, we got a my boy Tyrone in the house. My boy Tyrone. Can we say what's up. Hola, welcome, Sin City Crypto. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, that they get yeah, pretty sad, pretty sad. So, anyways, it's after it's 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 this this movie is made after a true story, and it shows the loyalty of a Shiba Inu dog, uh, not the token, but the dog. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're so tough. All right, that'll do it. That's it for our talking points. We yeah. are now- Hachio. Hachio. That's the movie. Yes. Yes. Or the dog. That's the dog's name. Hachio. Hachio. There's a statue. Will you look up Hachio statue? No. In uh, Hachio statue. All right. In Japan. Yeah. While they're doing absolutely nothing to bring you value <laughs> to the show, we are going to move on to our very next segment and our final segment of our show: the market analysis. We got some movement, baby. Pull up my laptop. Bitcoin nearing $41,000. We are up 1.81%. I want to go ahead and pull up CoinGecko because CoinGecko shows me by the hour. Let's see how much it went up by an hour. If it loads. It's not going to load, bro. I, nothing's been loading right. on my laptop. So then here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to look at the Bitcoin one hour chart and see what the hell going on. Can oh, we look at please this. get an IT guy in here to run some look cables at for us? this volume, my friends. Look at this. Back to back. Back to back. Amazing volume. We are finally over this. You know, uh, we talked about this and we talked about it with Forrest being here. And I'll go to the uh, I'll go to the one day chart so you guys can kind of see this this massive bear flag 
We broke okay. under it slightly. Let but me ask you a question. Do you think people filed their taxes last minute and the opposite happened? Maybe they got bigger returns and they're FOMOing into Bitcoin. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. To me, it's of no concern because I am buying Bitcoin. I still think this pattern is going to play out and we're going to break down. Now, there's two levels I have drawn here for you guys. The first level is the very next level of support if we break, the, uh, break beneath this pattern which is at 35,966. But the biggest one, the more stable one, is going to be this 29,238. Uh, 29, uh, I expect there to be a lot of buy orders at both these levels. So uh, if we crash, if we zip right through 36 and go down to 30, something happened. Uh, big news, negative news, recession, something. Because uh, I just don't see it happening. But there are those two levels. Now, you saw the volume on Bitcoin. Uh, there was a few charts or a uh, few coins you guys wanted me to look at. The first one was ETH. So let's take a look at ETH. Same thing here. Another bull, sorry, another bear flag for Ethereum if we kind of adjust it here. Again, started to break to the downside. We wicked down here. If I kind of zoom in, you guys will see what I'm talking about. We wicked under this trend line, but this is, if we zoom into this candle, now, please remember, there's still five hours. You all right over there? <laughs> still, I didn't realize he's wearing a shib hat. <laughs> Rocco, this show is, uh, he show doesn't, your he, face. He doesn't have the, the producer we don't have enough graphic power. We need yeah. a 3090. <laughs> we need another computer. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's got the shib hat. So when you're looking at candles, okay, they tell a story. You know, story. when you're looking at... Just let me make... When, I'm making a valid... I'm making a good I'm point I'm just here. surprised. You, your producer has been sitting here since 9 in the morning, and you didn't, haven't realized he's wearing a hat until three I hours later. I know he was later. wearing a hat. I didn't see it was a shib hat. I'm just saying, man. I'm busy. Anyways. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is sketchy. Why am I doing this show? Why am I doing this segment? Go ahead, bro. What were you saying? We done? We done with the statues? Yeah, and we the good. Dogs? We good. We good. Go okay, ahead, bro. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So if you take a look at these individual candles, you got to remember, they represent the sentiment of the trader. When you see big bodies, this colored in portion, that means that the buyers or sellers in this case, their conviction is strong, right? There's not a lot of volatility either way. When you see the opposite, smaller bodies and long wicks like this one, there's indecision in the market. Sellers drive the price low, buyers drive the price high, but the close and the open are near each other. So when you look at this one right here, this is called a, uh, a hammer. And when you see a hammer at the bottom of a downtrend, that is typically very, very bullish, being at, and Forrest talks about this all the time, keeping it simple, buying at support, selling at resistance. We have support right here on this trend line at 29.36. We see a, a hammer forming on the bottom of a downtrend. So, of course, not financial advice, but if I were to look, in, if I was looking at swing trading Ethereum, uh, now I would probably get into it. Now I would ladder in just because with candle formations, you want to wait at least one more day for the confirmation. So when this candle closes in five hours, we want to see what the next one's going to be like. And if the next one is green, then I would say, you know, instead of laddering in at that point, I would just put all of it in. But right now I would ladder in maybe 25%, see what happens tomorrow and either go the full hundred or do another 25%. Um, uh, what was the other one I wanted to look at was uh, Mina protocol. So, for Mina here, uh, looks like we're kind of in a symmetrical triangle pattern, which typically uh, not really doesn't really break either way. Could break upside, could break to the downside. But uh, if I throw the Bollinger Bands on here, you can see the we're towards the bottom of these Bollinger Bands. So if I were to guess, uh, I definitely think we're going to get closer to completing this pattern. But if I were to take a guess and, and kind of zoom out and look at the overall landscape, and I'll take the Bollinger Bands off because you can see a little better. But we've kind of been this double, huge double top here and then kind of trending to the downside. So I would think in the short term, we'd break to the downside and then, and then come back up and, and test this $2.96 level. But 
again, it just depends, right? With the crypto market, with such a young market, right? Cryptocurrency has only been around for 13 years. Bitcoin has been around for 13 years. You just don't know. There's not enough historical data to see, hey, when this happens, we haven't gone through that many cycles. So we can't tell. So at this point, our best thing is to look at the facts, look at the numbers, look at what the charts tell us, and make an educated guess. So that's literally what we're doing here. Uh, Solana, you know, Forrest talked about this, talked about Solana. Great entry point. You can see here if I zoom out, we've been in this downtrend since November of last year. We broke above it. We broke above the downtrend, but now we're kind of capitulating here at this uh, support level of 100 bucks. Now, if I go over to Crypto Stackers and I go to Solana, by the way, if you guys like charts, this platform, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, it. It just makes it so much easier and cleaner. So I'm going to do what Forrest does, throw on the easy bands. You can see we're kind of getting close to this, uh, this green dashed easy band, which is typically where you want to accumulate. And then if we do risk to reward, so if you were to get into Solana right now, what kind of risk to reward would you have? So let's take uh, the low here and let's take the high right here. So you can see we're finding really nice support at the two to one risk to reward level. So what this typically, uh, this indicator what typically means is if you were to buy it right now, taking from the low of, what was the low of $20 to the all time high of $256. What kind of risk to reward would you have buying at 100 bucks? And right now, if you bought it at $102, you'd have a two to one risk to reward, which is pretty good. Um, so Solana, again, none of this is financial advice, but if you were looking at swing trading, Solana now would probably be a good time to enter. Uh, the other coin someone asked about was Binance coin. Uh, again, you know, what, looking at TA on a lot of these coins, they're all in similar patterns. I can't tell you how many coins I've looked at. They've all been in a bear pattern. You looking up another picture over there? No, I'm looking at the price of uh, gra You want to look? Let's pull up on that. This is actually what I'm Take looking at. Take a break from the charts. I'm actually looking at the price of uh, 3090s. <laughs> okay, so chat. So do you think we should upgrade our GPU to a 3090 or should we just keep the 3080, buy a 3070? Look, look, they got a 3090 a for 1700 bucks, bro. That's pretty good price here. Uh, that's cheaper than what we bought ours for. What is that, a 3090? Yeah. So buy it. That's what I'm thinking. This third, this all white one's pretty nice. Look at that. Yep. Anyways, um, oh, you want you want to you want to see something else though? Um, where is it at? So, I got something interesting I wanted to share with you guys. Look what my YouTube feed suggested me, bro. You see the top one? Popcorn poppers. Well, this is literally my YouTube feed. As you can see, I got what crypto video, watching? crypto video, and then I have. Testing five popcorn poppers. I was so confused on how YouTube decided to suggest this to me. I had to screenshot it, bro. I was like... Well, you were obviously looking at popcorn poppers. No. I have never in the history of... Oh, you know what? You know what it could be? You got, all you need is you know a pot, it, no, no, you know and you put be? the popcorn in there, and you put a lid on it, and literally that's how you make popcorn. at my like, house, on my TV... Uh, Sin City Crypto, our YouTube channel is logged in, so it might have been my kids. No, no, this is my personal account, oh. not the, not the Sin City one. No, oh, oh, yeah, I have no. Uh, and I got zero. Uh, yeah, why? Why am I? What's getting the word I'm looking for? Popcorn popper. Huh? Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at BNB, and then we will be done for the day. So again, bear flag, bear flag typically breaks to the downside. Now you might be wondering, well, we're making higher highs and higher lows, but. Literally, I mean, this is a bear flag if I've ever seen one. I mean, the opposite would be a bull flag, which typically breaks to the upside. But by now, but still, even if it breaks to the downside, what what's the next level of support? The next level of support is is literally right here. Let me let me throw a horizontal line on here for you guys. The next level of support, bam, three hundred fifty five bucks. So if you look at the move from top to the bottom right you'd be uh you'd be losing 22 percent. that's from the top of this channel now if you go from where we are currently down here you're looking at an 11 percent loss so the risk of losing 11 percent versus we all know how undervalued bnb is robin do you agree that bnb is extremely undervalued yeah 
Extremely 100%. undervalued. What's the price of BNB right now? Four hundred and fifteen dollars, man. For the largest exchange, the second largest smart chain, the layer one chain, four hundred fifteen bucks. When it's got similar, not identical, but similar tokenomics to Ethereum, it's deflationary. It's only got like two hundred million tokens. Unacceptable. Why the hell is BNB less than a quarter of what Ethereum's market cap is? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. 68, mil, uh, 68 billion versus 363 billion. Make that make sense. It doesn't. This, the, the, Binance should be at around $1,200 a coin. It should be triple what the market cap is $1, now. $1,200 bucks a coin, huh? Hell yeah. All time high was 600 Hell yeah. Dude, it's only got a, you know, it's only got 165 million tokens in circulation. ETH has 120. You're telling me it can't get to 1,200? What ETH got to 5K? So you're looking at downside risk, okay? Downside risk, 12%. Upside risk, 3x your money. So I'm a huge BNB fan. Uh, I've been accumulating BNB since, what, seven, eight months ago? And I will continue because there, there's no way. It's so undervalued. So that, that's my two cents. What the hell? And I'm done. Got anything else to add? No, nah, that's it, man. I'm out of uh, random photos to show. I'm, uh, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. Uh, that'll do it for our show today. Thank you guys so much to all our new community members. Welcome to the Crypto Fam. Guys, go join the Telegram. All right? I put the link in the description of the video. Go join Telegram. We're trying to grow that. Uh, that'll be, we're going to slowly move away from the YouTube community post to the Telegram as our way to communicate with you guys. We'll be doing cool stuff in there. Maybe we'll start throwing some TA stuff in there. You never know. Might be giving out money in there. Who knows? We're very, uh, I'm a very, what's the word I'm looking for? Spontaneous uh, person. Uh, so make sure you guys do that. Also, rock and roll the outro. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Thursday, Natty Brunel. Friday, Forrest from Crypto Stagger. It's going to be an amazing week, you guys. We're excited. On behalf of myself, Robin and Rocco. We love you guys. Until tomorrow. Please. Yeah, we got up to 20, 19, yeah, 20 viewers was our peak here. So 10 shy of 30. So. Hopefully more people show tomorrow. But you know who will show tomorrow? I will. So will they. Make sure you guys show up as well. Peace. You gotta be aware, like when you talk, you gotta like your, your mouth should be on the mic.